This video is over complex numbers. But before we get to complex numbers and what they are and how to simplify them, let us review some square roots. So we had these exact same problems when I introduced square roots to you the first time. So let's see if you remember all of the rules. Take a minute, pause the video, and see if you can simplify these on your own. Okay, example one. We have negative the square root of 36. Well, the negative just carries over, and the square root of 36 is 6, because 6 times itself 2 times does give me 36. Example 2. The cube root of negative 64 ends up to being negative 4, because negative 4 times negative 4 gives me positive 16, and positive 16 times a third negative 4 does give me negative 64. Example 3, we can split these up to the square root of the top of the fraction over the square root of the bottom of the fraction. Simplifies to 4 ninths. Example 4 is where we got stuck last time. Okay. Remember the property that you cannot take a square root of a negative number. Because if you thought this came out to be negative 5, if I try and reverse it and square it, a negative 5 times a negative 5 ends up to giving me a positive 25. So there is absolutely nothing in here that I can square to give me a negative number. So remember that you cannot take an even root of a negative number. And that's what this video is over. Somebody back in the day said, I did not like that. I want to be able to go farther with this type of problem. So they made up something to answer their question. They looked at the square root of a negative number, or in particular, the square root of a negative 1. And they said, let's simplify this. And what they simplified it to be is i. And what I stands for, it is an imaginary number. It is pretend. It is made up. So usually the question that I get here is, if this is just a completely made up number, why do I or you as students need to do it? Well, if you are in the field of engineering, especially electrical engineering, you will see these I's quite often. So that's why you need to know it. If you are not in that field, then thank your electrical engineers for the electricity that you have today. And you can be appreciative that you will do not have to do this in real life, but that somebody actually does. OK, so back to that example that we just saw before. Square root of negative 25. We can split this into two roots. The square root of 25 times the square root of negative 1. But most of the time, we won't do this. We know that we can do this all in our head. The square root of 25 gives us 5. And we just learned that the square root of negative 1 gives us i. So this problem, now we can simplify it. It simplifies as 5i. Moving over to example 2. Again, we can split this up into two square roots. The square root of 7 times the square root of negative 1. You cannot actually simplify the square root of 7, so it just stays as is. But you can simplify the square root of negative 1, which gives us an i. Now, I ask you to be careful about this because that i is not under the square root. So especially if you are doing this on paper, people get a little lazy and they get extra long on the square root there, and it looks like the i is under the square root. That is no good. So make sure you finish that square root before you put your i down. Or sometimes I even rearrange the order, and I write it as i times the square root of 7. So that way there's no confusion of whether that i is inside or outside of the root. But I believe the online homework is going to favor this solution here. Example 3. We see two negatives, but they do not cancel out. You cannot transpose things from inside to outside of the square root. So let's first focus on the square root of negative 16. And that simplifies as 4 times i. 
And notice I did that without having to write out two roots. Then I just carry out or carry over my negative. So my answer here is negative 4i. Negative 12. I am going to break it down into two roots, but not because of the negative, but because I can do a good pi, bad pi method with this. This actually divides by a square. It divides by 4. So 4 is going to go in my first root, or my good pi root. And 4 times 3 is going to go into my bad pi. That's my leftover. Then I have that negative. Well, I just learned how to take square root of a negative. That does simplify. So we're going to put it in our good pi. All right. Now we can simplify the square root of negative 4. It simplifies as 2 times i. And then we have that root 3 left over. So there is our final answer to option 4. Now that we know how to simplify imaginary numbers, or how to simplify square root of a negative number, they expand upon this, and we deal with complex numbers. What complex numbers are, is they are a way to combine real numbers and imaginary numbers into one statement. So the A in this problem represents my real number. The B in this problem, because it has an I next to it, it represents my imaginary number. So complex numbers is always able to be in the form of A plus BI. And that's what the homework problems will ask you to do. Make sure you put it in that form as your final answer. So let's look at example one here. And if you want, you can take time to pause the video and try and work all of these on your own. Just remember to write that answer in the form of A plus BI. Okay, the first one. What we're going to do is we're going to simplify the square root of negative 100. That simplifies as 10i. If I carry down the rest of my problem, I have 3 minus the 10i. You cannot simplify any farther because they are not like terms. One of those is real and one of those is imaginary. It is in the form of A plus BI. So that is our answer there. All we had to do was simplify that root. Example 2. It almost looks like it's in that form. If you ignored the bottom half of the fraction, it would be in that form. But the fraction as we see it, that poses the problem. This has a quick fix to it. You just divide it piece by piece. So I have 2 fifths plus 7 fifths i. Now we do this a lot, but we actually usually do it in reverse order. We find a common denominator, and then we combine our fractions together to make us one fraction. Here, since it's very particular about the format that it wants it in, it wants it as separate pieces so we can pick out our real and our imaginary part, then it asks you to split it up. So if you only have one denominator, then you can split it up into this fashion. Here. Example 3. We have to do a couple things. We have to simplify that square root of negative 18. And then we have to worry about the fraction on the bottom. So let's worry about square root of negative 18 first. Let me just do that off to the side. I'm going to do that as a good pi and a bad pi. 18 is not a square in itself, but it does divide by a square. It divides by 9. And 9 times 2 gives me 18. So there's my good pi and my bad pi. But I have to figure out where this negative goes. We now know how to simplify the square root of a negative, so that gives me a negative under my good pi. If I were to simplify this, the square root of negative 9 gives me 3i, and then I carry down my root 2. So at this point, I have negative 6 plus 3i root 2 over 9. I have simplified it a little bit, but it is definitely not in the form of a plus bi. So at this point, I'm just going to split up my fraction, like I did in example two. 
as well as I'm going to rearrange some things. So I make sure that I is the last thing that I see. So I have negative 6 over 9 plus, now I have 3i root 2 over 9. Well, I'm going to do it as 3 root 2 over 9 times my i. Now it's easier to see what your b term is because that i is the last. You can actually simplify this a little bit farther because 6 over 9 reduces and your 3 over 9 reduces. So going one extra step, divide all of those by 3. 6 divided by 3 gives me 2. 9 divided by 3 gives me 3. And in my second fraction, again, divide those by 3. 3 divided by itself gives you 1. 9 divided by 3 gives you 3. So we have the final answer of negative 2 thirds plus root 2 over 3i. That is your answer there. Example 4. Negative 3 times a negative root 4. Well, we know that we can simplify the negative root 4 as a 2i. Now, you can multiply your negative 3 times 2 gives you a negative 6i. And that is simplified completely, but it is definitely not in the form of a plus bi. So, we have to put in what our a or our real number is. So, we just manipulate it. Our real number in this is a 0, and then minus our bi, so plus a negative 6i. So, if there's no a term, you need to put in a missing 0. And if there's no B term, you should also put in a 0i at the end of the problem. Note that it's really particular that your final answer must be in this form. If it's not in the form, then your online homework is going to count you incorrect. So there's my final answer in that format there. That's where I'm going to stop this video. And in the next video, we're going to do all operations on complex numbers such as how do we add, subtract, multiply, and divide them.